It's a road that's leading to change, for better or worse. This major highway in Morocco links the cities of Tangier and Casablanca via the capital Rabat. It's a lifeline for economic activity right along the coast, but it also represents socio-economic changes between rural and urban ways of life. On the outskirts of Rabat, this road cuts into the Ma'amora forest whose oak trees provide 70% of the cork produced in Morocco. Today, the forest is in danger of disappearing, a warning sounded in the early 90s by the UN Food and Agriculture Organization. Satellite images over numerous years show the extent of deforestation, marked here in red. Programs aimed at reversing this are shown in green, but they're not enough. Today, little by little, the forest continues to disappear. Overgrazing is making the problem worse. Pierre Decombe runs a training centre for forestry workers in France's rhone Alp region and has been invited to Morocco to coordinate a plan to save the Ma'amora. The forest and its 130,000 hectares is a melting pot for all the problems we have in the world today in terms of sustainable development. We have the current problem of urbanization, heavy urbanization. We also have a big increase in the population a change in cultural habits, which means we've gone from a haughty cultural way of life to intensive grazing. And with the cattle trampling on vegetation and grazing, there's a gradual loss of hummus for plants. This means that in the space of a dozen or so years, I've seen an extraordinary increase in the deforestation of the Ma'amora. Pierre shows us the road that leads to Dua Es Alimusa, a small village in the middle of the Ma'amora. Saving the forest means stopping overgrazing, and that means alternatives to intensive cattle breeding have to be found. In other words, new economic solutions for the local population. This is the approach behind one project here, gardening. In a partnership between the rhone Alp region and the rabat saleh zamour zaire region, a water pump has been built. A dozen families in this village are able to feed themselves. The aim here is to have controlled irrigation, which is why the project is deliberately kept small. To save the Ma'amora, considered the lungs of the region, it's all about launching alternative projects. Here it's shifting the focus back to family gardens and horticulture. The short-term benefits are mainly to do with the well-being of families, improving access to food. Another is financial. These families are spending a significant amount, which is incredible in a country like Morocco. Not being self-sufficient, they spend a lot to buy fruit and vegetables at the market. It's by addressing this that we hope to be able to save the Ma'amora forest. It has to be a priority to reduce the pressure on the environment and then we can put in place effective reforestation programs. A vegetable couscous is on the menu. For the past 30 years, families here have mostly lived on produce that comes from intensive grazing and very few vegetables. But that's now changing. But saying goodbye to overgrazing, respecting the forest and changing old habits takes time. Pierre and the local population hold regular discussions, weighing up the pros and cons of such reform. Another aspect of this project in terms of economic development is the use of medicinal plants and the promotion of ancestral knowledge. Officials in the region speak about the need to save one of the country's true biological treasures. They use the plants, for example, against fevers, headaches, even against sore throats, joint and back pain, etc., even to treat sickness in their cattle. 
The first job, led by an ethnobotanist, was to make a list of all these plants and their therapeutical properties. With these women, we are trying to cultivate these plants to preserve them. And we're trying to explain to them not to lose these plants by picking them, by pulling them out by the roots. In some ways, we're raising the women's awareness. Some 12 kilometers further on, we have a meeting with some beekeepers. This is the edge of the Ma'amora forest, and here we understand what's at stake. The landscape is already completely void of trees. This is a cooperative, where one of the young members explains why he got involved. For the people who live around the Ma'amora forest, it's very useful economically. For the honey, which is widely used in Morocco, it's used a lot in cooking and also as medicine against lots of illnesses. The aim of the project is to allow as many rural families as possible to benefit from beekeeping and stop an exodus to the cities. The project began with professional training courses. The organizers say the results are encouraging and today the cooperative is being extended. This with the help of a kind of sponsoring system. We're going to ask five new beekeepers to join the cooperative every year by lending out beehives. It's a microcredit for beehives. They will start out with 20 hives and their aim is to have 70 within five years. After that, they give back the 20 hives they've borrowed and these are passed on to new beekeepers and so on. The goal is to quickly bring the number of beekeepers in the cooperative up to a hundred. This would mean the creation of a solid economic base for a hundred families in the region. Think globally, act locally. That's the slogan that comes to mind when looking at these kinds of projects. They attempt to give people the right tools needed to achieve harmonious and sustainable economic development. If it works, then just maybe, the Ma'amora forest will last for many more generations.